Coach, how are you doing? Hi. Uh, Steve Hellwagon with Bucknuts. Uh, I was here 20 years ago when you were prowling the sideline with Mike Jacobs and John Cooper. Just uh, First question is just what's it like to be back and any memories of that experience and what it meant for you to have that opportunity back here in 97? Uh, at that time, it was probably the greatest opportunity that I'd had. Uh, to come here and, and, and coach, and I, I saw, got to see Coach Cooper yesterday for the first time since I've been back, and I had a wonderful time. I learned a lot of football with Mike Jacobs. At that time, I was a young coach, and you know he took the time to teach me about offensive line play. He was coordinating here, so I got the opportunity to do a lot of coaching and helping him, and it was a great time in my life then. I enjoyed it and, and really wanted to stay. But I had a chance to go with Coach Hollis and leave down there and get my own line and start my career, and I had the opportunity to come back. So it, it's unbelievable. Like, it's hard to describe in words what I feel like being from Ohio, coming back here and getting the opportunity to coach. Another question. Uh, I know you haven't worked directly with a lot of these guys yet, but uh, some feeling taking a junior college tackle, is that, how does that uh, look against the guys who are coming back, Jamarco Jones, Isaiah Prince? Like, do you have any idea of how that will all shake out or what you're looking at with that? Well, he, he fit, he's like those guys are. You know, he was a big athletic kid that, that we've been recruiting for a while and weren't sure what we were going to do, weren't sure what the numbers are like it is in, in any uh, year. But we had, when we had the opportunity to get him, I think what it does is it provides depth and competition. And I think those are two things that are critical in, in developing any offensive line. You want to have depth, and then you want to have guys competing for spots. And we're going to have guys at both those tackle spots that haven't had much rep at all, game reps or anything. So the more competition we can create, the more guys with size and athleticism like he is, 6'8", 320, and can move, you want to take as many of those guys as you can, let him compete, and let him get better and provide depth. So, you know, he's a great kid. I don't think it says anything, but we're going to create some competition among those guys. Uh, middle, second row middle, Ryan. Ryan Ginn with uh, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Just whenever you spoke to some of the guys who had committed you know, back when Warner was the offensive line coach, what were those conversations like? Um, you know, what did they ask you about your role? Any differences you had with him? And just what was the whole process like of getting them on board with being coached by you now? Yeah, that's the first thing you want to do whenever a change is made. Uh, you want to get to know those kids. And that's the first thing that we want to do. Ed and I and Coach Meyer both wanted to set those kids down and say, listen, here's what's happening. This is what we're going to do. The good thing is Ed's not leaving. He's right here. So the relationship that he had and Coach Meyer had, those relationships are still here. There's just going to be a different guy around him coaching him. So at that point, it was a matter of time, a matter of me getting to know them, spending time with them, sitting down and saying, hey, what makes you uneasy about this? Here's my background. Here's who I am. They just wanted to get to know me and meet me so that they're comfortable with the change. And then the time you spent uh, at LSU as the offensive coordinator for a couple of years, uh, did that influence anything you do as an offensive line coach, anything you learned about yourself during that time? Yeah, there sure is. I'll tell you, I know it was difficult. You know, it was very, very difficult for me running an offense and coaching all five of the offensive linemen. Uh, and I learned to lean on guys. You know, I learned that, that everybody in that staff room is important. You know, I, when you're the offensive coordinator, obviously you're out there calling the plays. But throughout the week and everything in that room, it's everybody's ideas. And I, I learned that lesson then, valuable, that everybody in the room has got valuable ideas. You may be the one calling the plays, but everybody needs to contribute. So, yeah, I did learn some lessons in that. Parker, it's WOSN TV 44 in Lima. Gavin Cup, one of those guys coming in. I know you had a chance to share with him a little bit. You've got a similar background with Gavin. How much does that help with being able to relate to him, and what are your expectations for him? We hit it off well right away you know i went up to see all those guys and i went up to see him we're from the same part of the state and we grew up his dad and and i know some of the same people growing up so that breaks down walls in building a relationship right away and you know after talking to him for 15 minutes you know same thing with josh myers and some of the guys that you know we've had and, and it's easy when you share similarities and so we had a lot of things in common right off the bat and so you know the, the, it makes that transition that much easier and it made those kids that much more comfortable with the change that was going to occur Your for Gavin? oh he's, he's going to be tremendous i tell you he's and i've recruited him before before i got here and to see him grow and his body's changed in the last year his body's changed and he's grown up and he is working hard to be a great player i expect him to play a lot of football games here You've had much time to talk shop uh, in terms of coaching offensive line with Ed yet. Does an offensive line coach, do you have something that you know is different that you want to teach these guys from what Ed did? Or are you guys, 
very similar in the way you approach the game. Uh, you know, how does that mesh early on? It's been great. You know, we've been we were just doing it right now. That's where we were, and uh, I think the one thing is, in in, in football. The offensive line coaching is a fraternity. So it's not like we haven't known each other. It's not like we haven't shared the same clinics and shared ideas and sat down because we have. And we're very, very similar in what we teach. Obviously, there's different ways of presenting things and different ways of teaching, uh, but we're the same uh, zone schemes, gap schemes, the thing they teach and run. Here's the things that I've done forever. So, and we've been in there meeting, you know, try to keep the terminology what it's been. We want to make that transition as easy for the guys here as we can possibly make it. I'm still going to add my touch and my flair to coaching the position, but within the scheme that he establishes and what he wants done in this offense. And we're going to keep it similar. And we've been meeting the past couple of days and again around recruiting as best we can. But I think it's going to be a really smooth, smooth transition. Having two guys with that offensive line background, you just, just take control of the room now? Hey, we do. Absolutely. That's one good thing. When you got the guy calling plays, know an offensive line, it's going to make my job a lot easier, I promise you. with Cleveland.com. You talked about you know the benefit of having Ed around for something like that. Is there any, I don't know what the word would be, any worry with something like that, that the guys who had him as their coach, maybe you want to make sure, well, they aren't going to check things with him because you're the guy in the room now. Is there anything that could be a negative with that? I don't see that. You know, because I, I don't want to come in. It's not like I'm coming in and putting my fist down. And, and how we coach these kids and how we teach these kids. And, I, you know, I think it's good to have another set of eyes on the things we're doing. And I, if those kids want to go ask him advice on something, that doesn't, you know, I don't have an ego. That doesn't bother me one bit. I think him and I get along. We've known each other for a long time. I know what Coach Meyer expects. I've been with him, you know, so it's all going to function in that system. And, you know, the more people you have and the more eyes you got on kids, he may pick up something I miss. You know, and within coaching the kid, he may have a way of reaching the kids here that he knows a little bit better than I do right now. So, no, I don't think – I think it's going to be a huge bonus. And Urban, in her earlier, had said he tried to hire you before at Ohio State. Why didn't you come the first time around? Well, there, there was there was some issues at the time. I just had a, signed a deal at LSU to be the coordinator for an extended period of time. Uh, in this profession, you know, I had two young kids that were, were, were going through high school. And I just had an extension to, to finish it and, you know, to move them again in this profession. If you can get your kids some stability and get them through high school without making changes. So at the time, while I wanted to come, it probably wasn't the best move for my family. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I was hoping the opportunity would come around, and it did. But at that time, even though I wanted to come, it might not have been the best thing for my family at that time. That was the reason why. Front row right, Bill. Joe Rabinowitz from the dispatch. Uh, 23 or 24 of the guys that went in today were pretty much known. Malcolm was maybe not. How much drama was there today with him? I don't think there was much drama. We've been we've been trying to, you know, he just came in last weekend for the visit. So it was a matter of he was comfortable with a couple other schools, but he had any idea. He hadn't known me yet. He hadn't been here yet. He hadn't met Coach yet. You know, he'd known he had a great relationship with Ed. Ed did a great job over the past year recruiting that young man. So we were trying to set things up because of the situation was it was just with him. His mom couldn't come because she's ill and those things. So he had to feel comfortable, and then he had to really go back and tell her about it since she couldn't experience what was here. So I don't know if it was as much drama as him letting his family there know, hey, this is what I experienced over the weekend. I want to do that. And it was important to him to get his family's blessing before he made that decision. His decision was clear before he left here. I think that's what he wanted to do. He wanted them to be as happy about it as he was. So that's what really what transpired. There could be a stigma about junior college guys. Ohio State hasn't recruited a lot of them. What made you think, what makes you think this guy is different? Again, spending the weekend with him. You know, I think you're right. You, you have to, that whole weekend that you get to spend, you really, and I spent as much time with him as I could over the weekend, you know, in talking to him. You know, I, I sat him, put him on the board. We did some football and those kind of things to see how he can present and, and understand the game and can he reach the level that we need him to reach. And he's a tremendous young man. When you get to know him and see him, uh, he's had a lot of things happen to him. He's risen above a lot of the stuff that's happened to him. And he, and he really wants to be here. That was the other thing. He wants to be here. He wants to succeed academically. And he wants to play big time football. And you know, after getting to know him, I, I think the sincerity level that he showed us over the weekend really was the key to us taking them.
Yeah, he's coming there. I told him he he called me, made some chicken Alfredo last night when he got home. I said, bring some next time. So. <laughs> Front row right, Tim. Uh, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Greg. Uh, number one, you're sitting here looking at it, it, looks like you have a starting center and a starting guard. And then, in your mind, is everything else up for grabs, or how, how would you explain what you're explaining to your group as you meet with them now? That's pretty much what I did explain. That's what I said, you know, based on what I've heard from Coach Meyer and, and, and Ed since I got here. Those two guys have performed, I'm talking about Pat and Billy, have performed at a high level. And what they've done has been amazing, watching them on film. And, you know, Pat's going to go to center and play a little center now. So that's good. It's new for him. It's fresh for him. And then the other three spots, and that's, what I, that's the good thing, I guess, about me being here is it's a clean slate for all those guys. You know, I don't, I don't know anything about them. You know, I got to coach them. I'm in there working with them now. We're doing all the things that we can do legally with, with what's going on until spring ball starts. But in their minds, it's a fresh start. If you want to earn one of those jobs, if you want to be one of the top five, now's your chance to go get it. And that's what I told them because I haven't seen you do anything. I have no, you know, pre yeah, preset prejudice against you in any way or what you can and can't do. I don't know. So we're going to go through this together. But the five that we find are going to be really good and they're going to do it the right way. So I think they're all excited about that and getting their opportunity to show what they can do. The Urban Meyer who hired you uh, a month ago, how different is that coach from the guy you went with to Bowling Green to start a fledgling or fix a program? What's the biggest difference in the two, the two Urban Meyers that you have now, where you've only been working for him for a month again. But I mean, right. what do you see that's different about him? I think he, ago? yeah, it's, it's, I don't think there's much because, 15 years ago. yeah, what, what, what you get with him is that energy and that passion. That's the first thing that I saw back then. And it's, and I've been around with some other coaches since then. I haven't seen that passion and energy in, in, in other guys that I've worked with. That, that's just kind of an aura that he has about him. Uh, I think the one thing is he's a little more calm now. Uh, I guess I say that we haven't practiced yet. I don't know if I should say that, but he's, he's, I think he's, his program, the way he organizes everything still amazes me. And I come in and I see Mickey, what he's doing there. When I see the structure meeting with people, you know, diving into these kids academics, none of that's changed. And that's why he's been successful. There isn't much change to him. He has an idea, a vision and a plan and he stuck to it. He stuck to it over the course of time, and, and it really is amazing the, 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 the way he is with the kids, the way he is with the coaches, the way his organiz organization is, you know. It's fun to be a part of that. But I guess I think he is a little bit more calm. I think he's delegated things out a little bit more to people. I think he tried to do a lot more things back then than he has. So those would be the things I notice now. But that energy level and that passion, that's never going to change. That's part of the reason I enjoy coaching. You know, the, the other thing, uh, what, what, does he, what did he tell you when he hired you this time? that he wants from you, is it, I mean, because, you know, he's big on, like, not hiring gurus, as he calls it, things like that. What, what does he want from you? I think what he enjoys about me and what we've talked about is passion and energy and coaching that position. You know, I have a love for the line. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rather coach any, I wouldn't coach any other position, all right? I'd coach line before I had an opportunity to, to be a coordinator. I had to give him that up before that. So I think he knows. And the other thing is the relationship with my players. That's one of the things that I pride myself in. Guys that I've coached in the past still coming back and being a part of their lives. And, and that's one of the things that Coach Meyer prides what he wants. He wants that player-coach relationship to be the best. He knows that's one of the things I do the best. And so I think that's one of the things, the reasons that he obviously brought me back was something to do, you know, along those lines with that, because I think that's one of the things that I excel in. When you look around the locker room, you were at LSU for a while. Yep. When you look around the locker room, do you see similar talent level? Of course, you, you haven't really coached a team here yet. And stuff. Right. What do you – is Ohio State on par with that kind of talent level in your mind? There's no doubt. And I've played in the last two years at Maryland. So, yeah, I've seen them on the field in, in a game. I've broken down the film. There's no doubt they are. At every single position, you know, that's why I said there's there's – this is an SEC kind of team with the speed, the size, and everything that, that is about it. There's no different whatsoever. Back row left, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin in uh, Buckeye Grove. All my fridging questions got asked, but uh, Jack Wallabaugh, uh, air apparent maybe in center after uh, Pat Elfline. What did you see out of Jack? And then a second part two, when you talk about everybody trying to slide into positions, is, a, is the potential there maybe for like Jamarco Jones to slide inside? Number one, Jack Wallabaugh. I, I, and I saw him in high school film. I've never seen a guy with play with such passion and finish and effort 
I mean, trying to absolutely just gore people. And that's rare in high school. Yeah, so I saw that when I was recruiting him. We had him over at camp and those kind of things. So I know what he's about. There's, there's a kid that absolutely loves to play the game. And I think he can be an outstanding center. Maybe a center, maybe a guard. I don't know yet. But he has the potential to do exactly what you said. So I just saw, I've never seen a kid like that on film. You know, do the things that he's done just energy-wise and finish-wise and those kind of things. He was, you know, he played hockey. That just shows you what a great athlete the kid was. So I'm excited about him getting a chance to coach him. Jamarco, there's a chance anybody can move inside. Like I said, I haven't seen these guys. So just moving outside in the weight room and some of the things that we've done so far, there could certainly be a chance he can move inside. There certainly be a chance he could be the left tackle spot. So I don't know. That's the good thing. I get to start from scratch to get these guys out there. But what we're going to do is try to find the, the best fit for every single one of them. That gives us the best five guys on the field first and then the best backups after that. So yeah, there could be change in any one of those spots. Last couple questions. Second row left, Lori. Uh, Lori Schmidt, 97.1 The Fan. Coach, uh, I guess, are you considered a slob yet? I think so. I think it's safe to say. <laughs> Is, um, I mean, Urban talked about how the offensive line set the culture for the team. How would you describe Slav culture? Well, I think, I think those guys set the culture because, number one, they work very, very hard, all right? And the things we do are not natural, okay? Meaning, you can stand up here and we can play catch. You can throw a pass like a quarterback does, right? You can run around and I can throw you pretty close. All right, you can grab the ball and run the ball. If someone was running it, you could probably come up and tackle them. All right, so if you drive across any playground in Columbus, you'll see kids out playing. You don't very much drive and see them drive blocking trees or drive blocking a fence, do you? No, I haven't seen it. So what we do, all right, is very difficult. They have to work very hard at it, and there's very little accolades involved with it. All right, and I tell them, the only people that's watching you during the game is me and your moms, probably. Your dads aren't even watching what's going on. They're watching the ball. So that develops a cohesiveness among those guys. All right, it's like a family. You can pick on everybody in the room, but somebody from the outside better not pick on anybody in the room. And the culture that those guys set with their work ethic, with their camaraderie, it spreads to the team. And I think that's what Coach is talking about. That's where any good team I've ever been involved in has had a good core guys up there. They lead, they work hard, they're unselfish, they're fun to be around. All right, they, they like to have fun with everybody. But, but when it's time to go, they go work, and they're tough. And so I think that's what, Coach, that's, what I, that's what I understand it as. That's what I've always been. That's why I enjoy coaching the position so much. Uh, from Roland Blake, Williams, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Uh, you touched on talking to the guys who had committed to Ed and, and what that was like. I'm curious, what are the other challenges in coming in so late in the recruiting cycle uh, for you, and, and what difficulty, how difficult was it to leave guys that you'd built a relationship with as recruits? That's the hardest part. Um, that's the hardest part, I think, when you leave any job is, number one, leaving the guys that you've coached, especially the ones that you've recruited, all right, okay, to that place and those things. So, And I think you have to do that as professionally as you can because – and, and you have to understand, sometimes if you just leave, uh, it's hard. It's hard on those kids, you know. So those, those aren't easy things that we deal with. And then coming in here, you have to start and develop new relationships. They don't know me. All right, I got here late in the recruiting process. You know, I was thrown into some things where I could help with a few of the guys in this class. And that's where, you know, I just wanted to be a part of as much as I could do in a short period of time. But I really wanted to, to take care of the guys that were here, the guys that were coming in, letting them know, hey, it's going to be okay. All right, this is who I am. This is, this is you get to know me so you can understand that your decision, all right, to come to Ohio State is still a good one. I'm just a small part of it. You picked a great university, a great institution, and a great football program. Here's what I'm going to be. Here's who I am. So they were comfortable with it. So it's touchy. It's hard. But, you know, you just got to get in, be yourself, and let them know that who you are is going to be able to help them through the process they're about to undertake. He's kind of the older guy in that room, otherwise it's a fairly young room. He's known one thing for going on five years. Did you make it a point maybe to establish a relationship with him first? And then I guess in general, how has that relationship sort of developed since you've been here? The, the first day I was here, I met Pat and we went out to dinner that night. So just what you said, that was one of the first things. You go Because it all starts, any room starts, our room starts with the leaders in that room. 
All right, and I would tell them, it's me and it's leaders in that room that are going to kind of develop, dictate the culture so that we show the young guys how to do it because they're coming in there and there's a lot of young guys in our room now. All right, and those guys don't know how things are done quite yet. They're starting to learn. They don't know how to work quite yet. They don't know how to finish quite yet. All right, so Pat needs and I need to be on the same page as the leaders. I'm not in there in some dictatorship, boys. We're in this together. All right, and to get involved with Pat and Billy early, which is what I did right away, and get those guys, let those guys know, here's what I expect in this room, okay? Here's what we do here. Tell me what you guys have done. Tell me what your culture is. And we talk back and forth and shared ideas so that we're always on the same page when we're dealing with the guys in our room. And I wanted to be upfront and honest with them and let them know, hey, this is who I am. This is what I expect. Now, how can I help you be a better player? What do I need to do to make you the best player you can possibly be? And then you can help me lead these young guys so that we can make them the best they can be. That's what it's about. And then to bring in uh, a junior college guy, I'm sure if you had just recruited five normal high school seniors, no one would bat an eye at it, but is there any extra smoothing over you have to do with the guys in your room when you bring in a guy who's more established who's going to compete for playing time right away? No, I don't think so. I think, I think they, you know, they, it might you know, get their attention a little bit more with the junior college guy. But again, to me, that's good. That's healthy competition. All right, I want to, we want to play the best guys. We want to be as good as we can possibly be. And I think the only thing that'll do, you know, he was here, he met those guys this weekend. Those guys got along great. I think the thing that he'll do is make our room better because now you want to play, you're going to do the things right. You're going to be the best you can possibly be to play. And if you're afraid of competition, you ought not to be here anyway. And I don't think any of them are afraid of competition. I think that's just going to make us better.